Thank you for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another episode of Bionicle Fan and Reviews, where I review all of the fan-created, canonized Bionicle models. These are not official LEGO sets, but instead they're fan models that have been accepted into the Bionicle Generation 1 storyline, either via official LEGO contests like the Dark Hunter Arahi contest of 05, or through modern canonization contests like the one that TTV is currently running, overseen by Greg Farshti, the herald of the Bionicle storyline. Today's subject matter is a very interesting and complex model, the Iron Wolf, which was one of the last models canonized for the Generation 1 storyline. As such, it actually takes place in Barra Magna. This is one of the 09-010 canonized models, and was one of the robotic-slash-organic creatures that traveled around in packs of Barra Magna, and usually accompanied Sorel, who was an ancient icy Glatorian. There isn't too too much deep backstory behind the Iron Wolf, after all this is supposed to be just one out of many different animals, although it is said that they were a strange blend of organics and technology, which kind of explains all the silver going around in the armoring of this body, while the tubes I presume are supposed to imply the fact that it is organic. It's a very interesting model, and it is one that was, again, one of the last canonized models, which means that a lot of people are getting better and better at building Bionicle mocks, and they were becoming a lot more sophisticated, which we're going to be seeing as we review this model. Speaking of which, I'll be reviewing them on four main points. Number one is posability. Can I get this into cool poses? And for the cases where people are holding weapons, can they hold the weight of their own weapons? Number two is building techniques. So does this just recycle things from the sets, or is it actually trying something new? And are there any illegal techniques being used that strain the pieces? Number three is overall aesthetics. So how good does this look as a model? Does this look menacing? Does this look like a wolf? Does it look like a creature? And number four is how well does it fit in the Bionicle universe? So how well does it compare against other Bionicle models, and does it make sense in the story for which was written for it? And so without further ado, I think it's just time to dive right in and check out the Iron Wolf, one of the best Bionicle canon models. Alright, so as usual, let's start off with a 360 degree turnaround of the Iron Wolf. You'll immediately see that this is a much more sophisticated model than the ones that I usually review. This is because this was built around 2009-2010. It was made for a Biosector 01 canonization contest, unlike many of the other sets I review, which are typically stuff that were made probably by children for the Dark Hunter or Rahi contest back in 05 06. To add on to that, this model does take advantage of a lot more modern pieces. Many of the Dark Hunters and Rahi were limited to the piece selection from 05 and 06, whereas this one takes advantage of all 10 years of Bionicles since it was one of the final canonized models to be ever qualified for the Bionicle Generation 1 storyline. You can see all around that it's using a combination of unorthodox and unique building techniques, perfectly blending the organic look and feel alongside a more mechanical hybridized model. What's really great about this is that you can very clearly see what animal it's supposed to be based off of. Obviously, it's very clearly a wolf, but you can also see the Bionicle influence. You've got a piston in the front leg, you've got tubes running in and out all throughout the back, and a very curved structure in silver armor, which really does help retain that Bionicle look and feel. This is, I will say, one of the most technically advanced models that I've ever built for this show, and that does come with a few downsides. Of course, all this complexity does require a lot of techniques to be very, very illegal. And quite frankly, especially as you go near the front, the torso just isn't as stable as I would like it to be, especially when compared to many other builds, simply because it's so complex you can barely move it around. But let's remove it from the rotating platform and dive right into the review itself. Alrighty, so here we have the Iron Wolf. I want to start off with the first point that I mentioned on our four-point list, which is posability. You can immediately see that this can actually be posed in a lot of different ways, a lot more than you may expect. If you look at the front head here just to start off, unfortunately that's one of the weaker aspects of posability. You can see right now I can't really move it around too much, but it's not that big of a deal because there really are no gaps. If you wanted to move it around more, there would be more gaps. Unfortunately though, what isn't good is that as you can see as I bend the head down, it starts to split the torso in half. That's because the technique used at the bottom is very illegal, and as soon as you move the head downwards, it literally starts to tear the torso apart, 
which is a huge shame. The more you wiggle it around, the more likely you are to pull it out of the socket. And that really isn't something that I do like about this model because of how flimsy it is. So obviously you can't really move the head around too too much, you're kind of limited to these poses. Although I will have to say that if you could move it around a lot more, then it'd be a lot more gappy. So I can kind of understand it. But moving on to the leg here, you'll notice that we actually have this classic Bionicle piston piece here. Now this, I will say, is mostly just for show, as we'll see. For the upper part of the leg, you can pretty much just move that around any which way because, well, it's just connected by a standard ball joint. Let me just reattach the head here, which has somehow gotten separated just by me moving around the leg. But going back to the leg, let me just try to get this into a semblance of a standing pose. The one thing that I do want to point out here is that this piston doesn't work too, too well. Because the moment I move it forwards too much, you'll notice that that connector immediately separates from the axle. There is no actual piece that's holding it in. So when you try to bend the leg too much forwards, then it just separates out. That being said though, this piston really is just for show because if you actually try to bend the leg without actually moving the piston whatsoever, it is possible. As you can see, I'm about to show you right here. Obviously this piston is mostly just for aesthetics because when we move the leg as such, you'll notice that I can actually move it without having the piston extend or retract at all. Just due to the virtue of how these pieces connect, how the Glatorian handpiece is really not really attached to the Technic build assembly up at the top, means that you can bend the leg and get a pretty wide range of motion without actually having to bend the piston whatsoever. Which honestly, I think is both a pro and a con. Obviously, there's no friction or very little friction in how this bends, so sometimes you can get this particular piece into some awkward positions, especially when you're bending it, but overall it's good. The other thing I do want to mention here is that the claws on the feet, I actually had to make a modification to the design. You see, I've added a hollow stud piece to the tips of the feet, which attach the claw to the Mata ball joints. However, this piece was not in existence when this model was built. Instead, the official model asks for you to place the claw directly into the Mata ball joint. To be completely honest, I have not had that much success with this technique. I have found it incredibly flimsy. I don't know if anyone else who has built this has tried this, but as you can see, literally just brushing my hand against it caused the claw to fall out. There's almost zero friction whatsoever holding that in. I'm, I actually don't even know how they even managed to take the picture of the claws in in the first place without having to cheat a little bit, maybe put some glue or a little bit of tissue in between. Really, there's no friction whatsoever. Of course, this will vary by part, but especially because the claw piece is rubber, just shaking it around will cause it to fall off in most cases. Which is why, just for this one time, it was basically impossible for me to do the review without implementing this modification in the first place. Normally, I don't try to modify these sets before reviewing them because I want to review them in their base form, but this one literally just would not allow the claws to be placed in in the current building technique, which I feel is a little bit disappointing. Obviously, though, it is the best they could have come up with given the parts available, especially because this hollow stud was not in existence when this model was built. Still, kind of an awkward technique. I really do wish that they came up with something better, especially because the base form of the model is pretty much impossible to stay together when it's built in that current position. I also do want to note that not even this technique is perfect. As soon as you push down his foot at the wrong angle, all those claws are just going to pop right off. It's really annoying because especially with this being used as feet, you would expect to have them in different kinds of positions, maybe one partly lifting off the ground or being angled a certain way, but the very fact that the claws are mounted on ball joints don't even allow it to have that much articulation because unless you pre-articulate these claws, pushing them down will just cause the claws to just pop right out, which really is quite unfortunate. But now let's just move on to the back legs here and start taking a look at the rest of the construction and articulation of this build. Moving on to here, you can see that these are a lot more simple than the front ones in terms of articulation at least. You can really just articulate them based on, well, how you can see me articulating it right now. Basically just standard ball joints here. One thing I do actually really like is that you do get a little bit of articulation and extra articulation in the way that this lower limb is constructed. I actually really do like the construction here, how they've used basically just a ball joint attached to another ball joint and added some flex hoses around it. 
Obviously, you can articulate the back claws as well, and thankfully those ones are not falling off because those are actually mounted and held in by Technic connectors instead of the Mata ball joints. Another thing in terms of articulation is this tail. I actually really love the technique used for the tail, which uses this flex tube and Mata hands spaced a little bit regularly apart just because it provides a little bit of extra flex. It really was not needed for this design, but the way that it curves down organically really does add a ton to the organic nature of this build and makes it appear like a real animal. It's one of the best detailed parts of the entire set, and it's so, so simple too. Really, it just requires a flex tube and sticking some pieces on it, and that's it. Moving on to the underside of the build, taking a look at the way that this is all covered here, I notice that the flex tube here really does a great job of blending into the rest of the body. You'll notice that the way that the hands kind of cup around the flex tube makes it almost look like it's some sort of organic or hose material inside their body, and the white pieces are maybe like fur or muscle that are covering it. Just got to reattach the front of the head here, which has fallen off yet again. You can see just how flimsy that is, but taking a look at this from pretty much different angles, rotating it around, it's a pretty solid build, and you can immediately see what animal it's supposed to be. The one thing I really do like about this back leg as well is just how well it is shaped. You'll notice that the parts usage of the Pohatu Nuva propeller piece alongside the Silver Rakshi armor and Toa Nuva armor really blend quite well together, and it really does make it feel like it's a cohesive, consistent limb. The flex tube, or the smaller hose stretching around the back of the leg here, really does make it feel like it is part of the rest of the model, which is something that does actually work quite well for this model, having all of the tubes snaking around it, ensuring that it has a cohesive design. Again, with the tubes running from the center of the body all the way to the back, even supplemented by these larger Technic hoses around, really make this feel a lot more organic than arguably it actually is. Because, well, after all, you are building something with primarily just Bionicle and Technic pieces. It really goes a long way. That being said though, some of the building techniques are a little bit more questionable. Specifically, I keep coming back to the way this head is mounted. You can see it's fallen completely off at this point, and I can show you why. Look at this. Every single thing is attached just by that one Technic axle connecting in the connector there. And the thing is, it's actually being forcibly pushed apart. So you can really try to squeeze it hard, really try to push down on stuff to force it in. And look at that, I've already detached some pieces of the head here, but you really have to squeeze super hard to get this in. And even after I did that, it still sometimes won't stay in. Having the head split apart like this completely destroys the rest of the integrity of the torso. Flipping apart this Borok shield here so we can get a closer look inside, you can see that basically the whole upper torso is attached just by this one axle. So unless this axle is perfectly in, and the way that the gears work actually actively force it apart, you'll notice that the rest of the torso will just fall apart. It's really not good design, even squeezing it together, there's so much gappiness in between, and there's honestly not much you can do to fix it without completely altering the way everything is built. Because as you can see, the pieces are literally forcing it apart, it is an illegal technique in every definition of the word. So that is really unfortunate, really frustrating to do, because again, as you can see, it just keeps on popping off. And the other really strange thing is that the instructions insisted that I use this longer form of Technic pin here. Now those pins are not attached to anything. You literally could have used the regular two length pin and not actually had the model be splitting apart like this. But if you look at the official image and whoever reverse engineered this as well, it actually calls for those pieces to be used, I guess to bulk up the torso, but you can see here that they're literally conflicting with the Mata hand piece here and forcing the pieces apart. I don't understand why the model didn't just use the standard two-length Technic pin, especially because of how much trouble it's causing here. Now I will say, that is not the main source of the problems. There are a lot of other problems forcing it apart, but those are a contributing factor and certainly one that could have been avoided. So all in all, it's kind of strange how that all has worked out, especially because they seem to be playing an active role in splitting it apart. And also, they're not even doing anything to the model as well, except maybe when you look at it from certain angles, they seem to actually be showing. You may have noticed a piece just fell off, and yes, you'll, you'll take a look at this here. This assembly right here in my hand is literally just held on by the tip of a flex hose. 
which means that all of that's doing to keep things in is barely sticking in to a flex hose to stay on and honestly that piece feels a little bit high up anyway and almost feels like it wasn't completely necessary. It's so strange how some parts of this are built very well and other parts just feel like they've been kind of slapped on and don't really add too too much to the design. The other thing is that the torso is so bulky here and the head is mounted so low that it can actually appear a little bit awkward at times. Now I will say that obviously maybe there are some wolves that actually do have this hunchback look, but I think this is a little extreme. It's also not helped by the fact that the head keeps separating and going down even lower than it already is. You can see especially from this angle just how low the head is mounted compared to the rest of the torso. So even when I try to squeeze it together to the highest position, there's still this massive bulk of Technic pieces that are kind of hard to decipher and parse to the eye. That being said, however, I do really like how the back part of this model is built, as compared to the kind of jumbled, arguably kind of a mess of the front half of the pieces here. When you look at some of the angles of these particular pieces, it really does look kind of cluttered with these Technic beams here. You've got all this hoses sticking around. Sometimes it looks cluttered. I don't even know what these L-shaped Technic brackets are really there for other than to, I guess, kind of bulk it up. But it all kind of adds to the fact that it feels a little bit cluttered and jittery, especially because the back half of the model is so well shaped. It's really rounded and organic, and I honestly really like the back half a lot more than the front. The same thing applies to even the legs. I think the backs half of the legs are done better, even the underside is done a lot more cleaner in the back, especially as compared to the front, which typically is not the case. Normally you'd expect it to be the other way around. But the way that they've shaped the back and especially the underside here really shows some expert level shaping and using different kinds of armor pieces from completely different eras of Bionicle in conjunction with each other in really expertly done ways. And I really do love how these different armor pieces mesh with each other from the Metru chest plate here to the Anika leg armor to even the Metru shoulder armor. These all feel like they're part of one creature despite coming from different eras of Bionicle. Even the use of the foot pieces around the side really do help make the shaping look really great and honestly, it kind of looks better from this angle from the bottom than it even does from the very top or even the front. So there was a lot of attention to detail put into this. I'm not so certain that all of it worked out, but for the parts that did, it does look really good. And sure, I know a lot of people may say that yes, this is technically also illegal because it's really just built around this flex tube. But honestly, I can kind of excuse the back part of this and its construction a lot more than I can, say, the front part, which honestly feels really, really jumbled to me, almost like a jumbled mess of Technic from this particular angle, whereas the back, despite being also pretty illegal, actually does look really cohesive. And the flex tube for the tail and the hoses and the curve in the sides of these tubes really actually do add to that, making it feel like an organic animal instead of a robotic creation. The way that the pieces are angled for the tail here to taper to a point is really well done. I love how the thickness actually changes. You see the very thin Borok tooth or eyepiece here, and then the much thicker Mata hands tapering off onto a point here. Again, really helps with the parse usage, making it feel very, very organic. Really well done here. Even again, onto the back side, it actually does look like an animal, which is done really well. These silver Rakshi pieces, despite being really rare on Bricklink, had to pay like 5 to $10 for just each of these, really add a lot to the shaping here, and it is a very unique use of this Rakshi plate. The Anika foot here is another great parts usage because it feels like they're almost meant to work together. You'll notice that there's a specific cavity in the Anika foot that allows you to bend the leg outwards, and it specifically works in conjunction with the Rakshi head. Obviously, these pieces were made years apart, but the builder has expertly actually made them work well with each other without even having to sacrifice something like aesthetics or whatnot. It really just does work together well, and I really do appreciate the use of different parts from different eras to work together. And speaking of different pieces working well together, just look at how well this Technic piece works with the Bionicle piece on the other side. I really do like how this bottom leg is shaped here, the tube snaking through the Technic holes while still making it feel organic. 
It's really well done and a great combination of pieces. I honestly cannot fault the building techniques of this model too too much because despite looking kind of awkward around the front, a little bit too greebly and technic focused, it just comes together really well as a model. But finally, as I wrap up some of my points on building techniques and aesthetics, the final thing I didn't actually mention before is the head construction. Now this, I do have a few mixed feelings on. From this angle and from the top down and even from the sides, it looks really great. However, as you actually start to move around the sides and really start to take a look at it a little bit closer, there are certain angles where it kind of feels awkward. As you can see from the complete underside of the model here, let me just get this in frame, it doesn't have a lower jaw. The head just kind of tapers off, and it's left to your imagination what exactly these are supposed to be. Are the Technic black axles sticking out of the bottom supposed to be some part of a mane? Are they supposed to be teeth? And if so, where's the bottom jaw? It's just a little bit awkward to me how the top of the head works out really well, and then just going on to certain angles, it just doesn't really look that convincing. I do wish that there was just some semblance of some sort of a lower jaw, even just something covering up how hollow this underside is, because if you look at it from certain angles, it is really, really hollow. However though, I do actually really like the top side of the head. I think it does work out quite well, especially the use of the white claw pieces as horns and the yellow claw pieces as eyes. Despite both being claw pieces, they do work out quite well and very clearly define the facial features. But I think at this point I have said all I can about the specifics of the build, aesthetics, posability, and building techniques. We've looked at all three of those, so now let's zoom out and take a look at how this compares next to other representative samples from the Bionicle universe. Specifically, I'm going to be bringing over other four-legged Rahi, and even doing some size comparisons as to how well he sizes compared to, say, a Glatorian-sized figure, especially because this was from the Dara Magna arc, and he would have been scaling next to other Glatorian. In fact, we even have canon artwork of exactly how this works, so let's just bring over all the guys and take a look at the Iron Wolf comparisons. Alright, so here I've brought over some representative samples from the Spherus Magna slash Bera Magna storyline in 09 slash 10. We've got Anagori, specifically Ranu, right here to see how he scales. We have Sertavis, which was another fan-created, canonized Bionicle model from the Ice Tribe. He's a veteran Glatorian who probably would have interacted with some Iron Wolves. We have a Skrull who may have encountered one of these creatures up in the mountains. And I've also brought along one of the set animals from the Bera Magna storyline just to take a look in comparison to how other animals in the Bera Magna world scale against the Iron Wolf. I actually think that that's the most apt comparison, so let's just take a look at these two creatures next to each other. You can immediately see that actually they're about the same size, which I think is a really cool thing. Obviously this was used to pull a chariot, so maybe it's a little bit larger in-universe, but I do actually appreciate how the two Bera Magna four-legged animals actually do look quite similar. You can see right here that obviously while the set version is a lot more simple than the build of this actual Iron Wolf creature here, the proportions are relatively the same. It's kind of funny how this one also has this whole tail going backwards. Of course this one's two-headed, unlike the Iron Wolf, but you can see some sort of resemblance in these two animals coexisting on the same planet. This one also has an attempt to blend organic stuff, like using the Gresh spine here as the tail, as well as some armor and robotic stuff, like these silver pieces along the side, which is something that the Iron Wolf also does quite well. All in all, I think the animal-to-animal -animal comparison is quite good, in my opinion. Moving on to how he would scale next to Anagori, I think that it's relatively well. Obviously, he's a lot larger than a regular person would be in-universe, and I think it does actually make sense that if an Agori managed to tame one of these, they could potentially ride it into battle, almost like a horse-sized wolf, which I think is a pretty cool concept. This just looks really cool having a character be riding on the back of one of these, kind of like from a fantasy type story. So I do actually appreciate how well the Agori scales next to him. Moving on to the Glatorian, I think that the Sertavis model and the Skrull model 
do make a lot of sense and probably the most sense in scale because we've actually seen these iron wolves next to someone who is the scale of a Glatorian before. So specifically, we can actually tell whether or not they're the right size. And yeah, I think that the scale is pretty good. It is quite a large creature, but it's not too, too large where it's outside the realm of believability of being something that could be hunting in packs and posing some sort of a challenge to the Glatorian warriors, but maybe it's still possible to fight them off. It's not impossible to fight a ton of these off, although it is a lot larger than a normal wolf, so you do have to be careful. And I do think that this scales, again, quite nicely against these two Glatorian here. So in terms of believability in universe, I'm actually gonna give this one a 10 out of 10. And it's not just because of how well it scales with these other creatures, but it's specifically because I feel like this nails the Bionicle style really well, even more so than many of, say, the Bionicle sets themselves. Specifically, I love the way that they've actually tried to blend organic muscles and the tubes, I guess, counting as muscle fiber and sinew, as well as the more robotic and armored pieces, like a clear piston on the front of the legs. You've got some silver armor along the sides, clearly robotic pieces being infused into this organic animal, which I feel is kind of the core of Bionicle Rahi. They're supposed to be robotic creatures, but at their heart, they are partly organic. So I think this achieves that very well and is one of the best examples of this blend between being organic and being robotic that any Bionicle model has to offer. And so for that, as I said, 10 out of 10 in terms of believability in universe, I can totally see this one jumping right out of say one of the Bionicle movies. That's how good I think it is. It almost looks like it belongs in part of those and I can definitely see it making sense even alongside the Mata Nui inhabitants, the Matoran universe inhabitants, Obviously, the Iron Wolves were kind of a Barra Magna only thing, but I think I can definitely even see that still coexisting alongside them, which is a testament to how good this model is, at least aesthetically speaking. The other thing that's really great about this model, moving onwards to aesthetics, is, well, how good it looks just completely ignoring anything else outside of the universe. Specifically, I love the way that they've actually constructed this to blend together, as I said, the armor pieces here curving around onto the back legs, even the pistons and the claws. If there was one thing or a few minor things I would say about it, it's that the front claws, I feel personally, are just a little bit too large in comparison to the actual body and the head. Specifically, if you look at the size of the head, the front claws are absolutely massive. It almost looks kind of cartoonish, maybe not too, too realistic, almost like someone's wearing a costume of a wolf, at least on the front claw pieces there, just because of how large these are compared to the rest of the body. I much prefer the scaling of the back legs, actually. And honestly, these are so much more secure than the front legs because the claw pieces are not going to fall out of here. So I probably would have preferred it if they just used a similar technique for the front legs as they did for the back, because as it stands right now, the size of the paws right here just feel a little bit too large to me. And then of course you've got the head and the lack, I guess the lack thereof of a specific jaw for this creature, looking awkward at some angles. Overall, I would say it's pretty good, but there's still some ways where it could be improved, which is why I'm going to give this one an eight out of 10 in terms of general aesthetics. It makes a lot of sense in the universe, but there are still a few things that I wish could have just been improved in terms of how well certain bits and pieces of it scale with each other, as well as some aspects of it when looking at it from some strange angles. For instance, the front of the body, as I mentioned, is a really just big technic mass, kind of hard to decipher what's going on with all the grays and the whites and the silvers. And you've got some inexplicable technic pieces on the side, which I presume were there to kind of bulk up the gaps but instead end up looking kind of awkward, like this L-shaped bracket right here. But then moving on to building techniques. This one is where I probably am going to give the lowest score for this entire review. I gotta say it's a really mixed bag here because on the one hand, the building techniques are incredible. It's far beyond any traditional mock, traditional set. This is really an expert level build. But with that, you get a lot of problems with it. You've got a lot of strained pieces, illegal pieces, bits and pieces that just keep falling off. And that is a big con to me. I really am not a big fan of just how easy it is for stuff to fall off of here or get detached. So because of that, I think I'm going to give building techniques a seven out of 10. 
really sophisticated stuff, some really interesting uses of pieces, really great uses and blends of certain pieces working well together, like the Rakshi head and the foot piece here. But then it just keeps falling apart at the front of the torso, really hard to move around without really having the pieces separate, especially the head. As soon as you move it, something is going to detach on the bottom. So that is a big con for me in terms of building techniques. But then moving on to the final point, which is posability. Personally, I think posability is relatively good. There are a few poses where it's kind of easy to kind of fall over. You can see right here, the leg can slouch down and cause it to kind of fall like this. And you can see as soon as one leg falls, the entire thing falls over. It almost looks like he's slip sliding on ice. But when you do have it standing up, it is a relatively decent model. It's not like it's going to fall over repeatedly. It's only if, say, maybe you want to try to put one foot more heavily in front of the other one. You want to move this foot back. That's where you're going to get some problems of, as you can see, it's kind of slip sliding over. But also it depends on the surface that you use. I've had a lot of luck using the surface that I use for reviewing sets, but not too, too much luck on this more slight slippery table surface. So it really depends. Your mileage will vary in terms of getting this to pose. If it's on carpet, you're not going to have a problem, but there will be some problems on a smooth floor. And because of that, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 in terms of posability. Generally, it's pretty good, but there are a few things about it that make it a little bit non-stable, as well as, of course, the fact that this Technic axle will just pull out of the receiver there if you continue to bend the leg too, too much. So that's a bit of a con, I guess, that factors a little bit more into building techniques, but also into posability, because you don't want to have to bend the leg and put the piston back in every single time. So it's a bit of a con, but not a major one, because the rest of the model is really good. But with that, I think we've about wrapped up this particular model. I was very, very excited to build this one. Just by looking at images, I could kind of tell there were some illegal techniques. So honestly, I wasn't too surprised when I was having some issues keeping it all together with the front of the body here. Kind of to be expected, at least for where I was concerned. But in general, I think it's done really well. I love the shaping of the model. The aesthetics look great. It fits in the universe really well. And this is one of the most sophisticated models that they've ever done for the Canon Bionicle models. And actually a much more welcome surprise, especially compared to the hundreds of dark hunters that keep on coming. And some of them have a lot more shady build constructions than most. So I do actually really appreciate this model for what it is. What I recommend for you to build it Maybe if you don't mind having a display model, you really can't play with this model too, too much just because of how flimsy it is. But as a display model, it looks awesome. And if you're into that, then I'd say go for it. I'm very grateful to the Legend Reborn for actually putting together the instructions for this. Incredibly impressed with their work and how well this came together. I certainly would not have been able to reverse engineer this build from just looking at the pictures of it. So massive kudos to the people who are making instructions. And with that, that wraps up this video. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of the Iron Wolf? Do you like his build? Have any of you tried building it yourselves? And what do you want me to review next? Stay tuned every single Monday for a new Bionicle fan and review. And thank you so much, as usual, for tuning into Duckbricks. Stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks and bye-bye for now.